guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Montu Motors in Clearwater, Florida, because guess what? We have another Toyota JDM Classic for you. This is a 1994 Toyota Celica GT4 WRC. But before we dive into the Celica, let's talk a little history about what this car represents. So Toyota, being the type of brand that they are, love to go racing. And with racing, you improve the breed of the car. Competition improves everybody's vehicles. In 1986, that's when they were using the Celica platform for their World Rally Championship glory. Today, they do still race in WRC with a heavily modified Toyota Yaris. Back in 1986 though, things were a little bit different cars were a little bit closer to what you could buy off the showroom floor with what they were racing at the top level. And Toyota used the Celica from 1986 all the way up to 1999. They did win a World Rally Championship with the Matador, Carlos Sainz, many other stage wins, and really put their stamp, that Toyota stamp on the World Rally Championship. Now, one thing they had to do to use those Toyota Celica GT4s as they were known for is they had to make a street going homologation model. So homologation is all about a requirement that they had to have a certain street going vehicle to race in the World Rally Championship. So this 1994 Celica GT4 is that homologation special. And this one being the WRC one is the top trim. So we're looking at all wheel drive in a Celica and turbocharged goodness. Let's go ahead though, let's dive into this 1994 Celica, that GT4, that iconic JDM Classic, and see really, is this car even more special, more unique, and more rare than a Toyota Supra? Let's go ahead and check it out. Right off the bat, the styling. Pure 1990s, everything was getting rounded. I do like, even though I missed the earlier Celica pop-up headlights, I really did, was digging the style of these headlights back then, and I still they still hold a sweet spot in my heart. So you're gonna have the four headlights, two on this side, two on that side. Being the WRC trim, lots of special body parts. The hood, unique and special to this car. The whole front fascia, so you can see how the headlights are blended into the front fascia. We come across that iconic Toyota logo with that grill, so you have that nice, mesh that's going to bring air in. Remember, this is a turbocharged intercooled engine, flat black, open lower area. You do have your lower fog lamps, and you could just see that rally-esque look from the front end of the business. Going up onto the hood, this is one of my favorite hoods in all of automotive history. I love this functional heat extractor here that they have on top, and all the little vents, everything is spot on functional, and it looks like it came right off of Carlos Sainz's WRC car. Really, just so many memories, and, and, and just a time where the Japanese brands were at the pinnacle of everything. Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Subaru. We come around the bend, this one has some uh, modified wheels, these inky wheels, bright white to match the color of the car. It's a 16-inch wheel, 205 on the width, Meaty 55 series sidewall. Remember, back then, we weren't running 30 series sidewalls. We weren't running 20 inch wheels. This is a different time. You gotta take that into consideration. 1994, where were you in 1994? I was graduating from high school. Where were you? Put that in the comment section. But just the classic lines of the Celica, very clean, no stuck on vents. And like I was saying, back on this hood, you can see everything. I'm putting my hand in here. This stuff is functional. It's not only for show, but also for a lot of go. You do have your side marker light, color matched on the mirror caps, that nice classic fast back design. Celica and Supra Park next to one another in 1994. You can see the family resemblance. I love the large rear quarter window, and even the way the door and everything just flares out towards the rear of the car. When we get to the tail end of the business, this is unique to the GT4. WRC. So GT4, the four stands for all wheel drive. You could see the riser that was added here to bring up this rear wing. And this is not for just show. This actually produces extra downforce and was very similar to what was used on the actual WRC car. GT4 badging, Celica badge. We drop down, 
you have your single tip exhaust right out back. And remember, power getting to all four wheels. Let's go ahead and pop that fancy special hood and see what is the power plant of this GT4. All right, guys, we got the hood popped underneath that hood. It's almost like a time capsule. Untouched, unmolested is that 3S GTE inline four turbocharged engine. You can see the strut tower brace, massive strut tower brace out back and out front at the front end of the business, check out the size of that turbo. So you're looking at that two liter inline four turbocharged engine pumping out 252 horsepower, 224 pound feet of torque. It's all routed through a five speed only manual transmission as it should be. Remember, hashtag save the manuals. This Celica GT4 WRC weighs in around 3,064 pounds, zero to 60. If you know how to dance with those twinkle toes and you know how to shift zero to 60 in about 5.8 seconds, it produces 13 pounds of boost to get the business done. Looking underneath the hood, like I said, really just nicely well-preserved. Nothing's been cut up, nothing's been chopped up. Why don't we go ahead, let's fire up this inline four turbocharged engine and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 1994 GT4 WRC. I know you're at that point where you're like, Joe, this thing looks like a cream puff. It looks like a time capsule, especially on the inside, especially under the hood. How much is it? Wow. Oh. Oh, there's a mosquito in here. Just killed it, killed the mosquito. Montu is actually asking $24,500 for this one. Let's see what you get for the money. To the door panels, guess what? all original, original door panels, no tears at the top of the door panel. You can see on the armrest, everything is super clean. You do have a nice pocket down there to slide about seven or eight Twinkies as you're doing your WRC championship. To the dash, same story, soft touch material. Normally these dashes are all cracked up. If you know 1990s cars, these things did not take the sun very well. No cracks or anything. I love the way the whole center stack is tilted for the driver. Driver focus, you have an original Toyota tape deck. You see that? You could put your NWA, your, un, your Run DMC public enemy tape in there and jam out. You drop down, you have your original AC controls. Little tiny cubby for some Jolly Ranchers, then check it out. Even the original cigarette lighter. A lot of times these get lost, kids put them up their nose. You have yours right here. Speaking of having, we have a nice five-speed manual transmission. And you know what? For 1994, short throws, very, very crisp, even to this day. It really shows the quality that the Japanese brands were really doing back then. We have another little con uh, container here. This is where you're gonna put the two picks to pick out the Twinkie crumbs and whatnot. Hopefully your Twinkies aren't from 1994 that you're storing in the car, but little tiny area there. Cup holders, that's what you get. Back in the 1990s, cup holders were not a priority. My thing, is if you're coming into my car with a drink, you better drink it down, guzzle it, because you're not bringing anything in here because you're going to spill it and ruin the interior. Hard as a rock on the armrest, but the good news is you got another cubby in there. You can put some Snickers, some paydays, maybe a hundred grand or two. And then finally the seats, full leather interior, and you do have back seats as well. Love the bolstering, nice. Look at this, no rips, no tears. Nicely worn, all original. And even in the back seat has, the seats are very, very nicely done. The thing that I love about the interior of these Celicas is that if you get a 1994 Supra and park it next to this car, the interiors were very, very sim similar. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Celica GT4. All right, guys, we're inside the business end of the Celica GT4. Remember, I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of headroom in here. Here are the original keys. You get two of them, which is nice. No key fob, no keyless entry. You're just gonna plug that right into your ignition right there. Steering wheel, all original. Nothing but the business. No uh, you know, volume knob or Bluetooth. You just have your straight up horn button. Pretty thick, could be a little bit thicker, but hey, it was 1990. A lot of girls were saying that back then. Check out the gauges. You have a tachometer that goes all the way up to 7,000 RPM. Speedometer in the center, boost gauge, coolant gauge, and fuel gauge. 
nicely sorted, but the great news is, like I said, no cracks, no tears, and you have your three pedals down below to do your heel toe downshifting. All manual seat controls, but even on the driver's side, it's a little ripped here, but down below, no rips. This could actually be repaired very, very easily. And for a car that's 25 years old, that's come to be expected. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out the trunk and see what kind of room you have in this Celica GT4. All right, guys, time to check out the trunk on the GT4. We lift this up, it's the whole hatch goes up. You can see the amount of room that you have. Of course, you're gonna have a full-size spare. You see this guy right here? You get a rear strut tower brace. So not only did we stiffen up the front end of the car, they stiffen up the back end. And I love the way they wrap it in leather just to give it a nice finished look plus you have all the room but let's get to the best part of any radies rise review if you're ready i'm ready let's take this celica gt4 wrc for a spin all right guys we left monty motors we're in the 1994 toyota celica gt4 wrc right away we got the ac blowing super smooth seats are comfortable and obviously always an experience to get into one of these JDM classics because you're on the opposite side of the car. Steering has a nice tight feel to it and I'm telling you it builds boost very very nicely. Visibility out over that beautiful sexy hood is on point and yes when you do look in the rear view mirror you are going to see that big spoiler but hey that's the price you pay to have a big spoiler. Sometimes when you have something big, it gets in the way. And that just is what happens with the, with the wing back there. But transmission, really, really nice engagement. Clutch pickup is perfect in here. And I'm telling you, it's these vehicles that really show how well Japanese vehicles were being made, especially during the 1990s. I'm telling you, the steering feel on this thing is phenomenal. No creaks, no rattles and I'm getting really great feedback. So I don't know what else you could ask for more out of a 25 year old car. All right guys, let's see how she handles in a left hand bend. Obviously I'm not gonna push anything crazy, but just to give you an idea, look at this, nice smooth turn in, the all wheel drive keeping us planted, exiting on throttle, here we go. Rev it out, third gear, nice. Really builds boost nicely, and you're up to speed, no problem, with the air on in a JDM Legend. This is what I love about these cars. Love sharing them with you, and just so unique. I remember as a kid watching the WRC Championship on Speed Vision, and now to drive one of these is just extra. It's just extra special, really extra special. Pedal placement is nice. Really digging the clutch. Flipping the throttle a little bit into this left-hand bend. All-wheel drive. Look at this. Nice. Coming around the corner. I'm telling you, the, the all-wheel drive really just plants you because when you get back on throttle, so second gear on throttle, you're just planted down. Really, really nice overall. Uh, I, I, I am just in shock at how tight this car is with the way the chassis is the steering the brakes everything feels oh so good in this thing and you just it's something so unique i mean like i said go to your local car gathering next time and then i want you to tell me how many celica gt4 wrc's you see you're probably not gonna see any just telling you all right, guys, hopefully this is giving you a nice overall feel about what the Celica GT4 is all about. We're going to get back, as we're on throttle, to Montu Motors and wrap this one up. So I will see you in a World Rally second. All right, guys, it's been another wonderful day here at Montu Motors. Definitely got to thank Sam and the rest of the crew getting us access to this JDM legend. 1994 Toyota Celica GT4. Is it a car that really you should add to your garage? I think there's no better time. After 25 years, we now finally can get these JDM legends in our driveways, in our garages. And I'll tell you right now, you go to your local car show or car gathering, you'll probably see five to 10 Supras. 
you're not going to see one of these and especially in the original condition that it is in and it's so fun to drive even in the year 2020. But if it's cars like these, these special homologation models that you want to see on Radies Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee, man in that camera. We're sweating it out here. He's sweating like a gorilla. Thank you, Tom, for your hard work. And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.